everyone, my name's Antoinette Staples, and this week I want to talk about what to do when God says wait. Yeah, I said it. It's the word that we all hate to hear. After all, time waits for no one, right? Well, yeah, today we're talking about waiting. And what do we do in the moments when we want something so desperately, but God is telling us to wait on it, wait on him. If this is your first time watching, I want to welcome you to my channel. Please be sure to subscribe. If you're coming back again, I want to welcome you once again and just say thank you for your support. So let's go ahead and hop right in. What do we do when God says wait? I don't know about any of you, but it's not a word that I like to hear all the time. After all, we've got our plans in place. We've got our dreams that we have posted on our vision boards and all these other things. And God knows, I mean, I'm on my own schedule. I've got my own time and things that I want to happen in a certain time frame. And so I need the Lord to help me with that. I don't have time to wait. I don't know if you've ever said that, but I often say, I don't have time to wait. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that, right? And so we're so busy and consumed with our own time that we often forget that we should be operating on God's time. And sometimes when we're operating on God's time, that means that he's going to tell us to wait on some things, some things that we really want to happen right now. God might just say, not yet. And so as I was thinking about that, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to share about those of us, uh, for those of us who are in a season of waiting, what do we do then? When you're, you feel like you've done everything that you know how to do, you said all the prayers you know how to pray, you've been to church, you've been fasting, right? For those of us that are waiting on God for a miracle, if you're on your job and you feel like I'm waiting on a promotion, God, I've worked hard and I've been diligent and now I need you to open up a door. Some of us are looking to God to restore a marriage or to heal us or we're looking for God to support someone or do something for someone in our family or immediate circle and we're praying for them just as hard as they're praying and we keep getting weight. It's not the answer that we want. As a matter of fact, Lord, we need a response from you right now. And sometimes that response is simply, wait, I'm working behind the scenes. I'm doing everything that you need me to do. It doesn't look like it. So sometimes God is answering us in his silence because he's telling us to wait on him. But what does it really mean when God is telling us to wait? In our season of waiting, what is it that God really wants us to do? I found a poem that I'm going to share with you a little bit later. Um, but I, I wondered, what is it, Lord, that you want us to do in our season of waiting? Well, God wants us to wait with the spirit of expectation. For the mother who conceives a child, you wait for roughly about 40 weeks before you get to birth that child and meet your baby for the very first time. But you wait with a spirit of expectation. And just like anything else in life, when we're expecting God to birth something in us, we should be waiting with the spirit of expectation. So when we look in scripture, in Psalm 62 and five, it says, my soul waits silently on God alone, for my expectation is in him. I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes we can be guilty of waiting on other people and our frustration comes not from God, but from the inadequacy of us to trust in God, for us not to really believe in him and trust in him. And instead, because of that, we end up trusting other people. We end up depending on someone else and we feel let down when the truth is we should not be depending on man. We should be depending on God. And in those moments, we don't have the opportunity to get frustrated or discouraged. We're human, we have those feelings, but you can't stay there very long. Why? Because my soul wait silently on the Lord for my expectation is in him, right? I wait on God alone in Psalm 62 and five. So I believe when the Lord has us in the season of waiting, He's saying, wait with great expectation. Don't you believe I'm going to do it? Don't you know that I am able? So while we're in, we're in our season of waiting, God wants us to wait greatly 
in expectation, but there's some things that he wants us to wait on. And while we're waiting, there's some things that God is trying to show us in that season. He said to us in his word, and now we're in Psalm 60, excuse me, Psalm 27 and 14. And it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In Psalm 27 and 4, I, 14, I believe that God is really just showing us through this scripture here that we are going to need to be courageous. That doesn't mean in your season of waiting that you won't face trials, that you won't face challenges. The enemy, let's be real, will attack us 10 times over. Putting that doubt in our mind, God hadn't answered you yet. Where is your God? Where is he when you need him, when you're crying out to him? In the waiting season is a very tricky season. And so we have to be mindful that God's given us a word. Why? Because he knows that we've got to be courageous in that season. We've got to be trusting. And then it says that he will strengthen our heart. God gave us that word because he knows that we need to be strengthened in our season of waiting. So while we're waiting with the spirit of expectation, you should be expecting God to strengthen you in your season. God is going to give you strength, but not only will God give you strength, he's also going to give you patience. And many of us know that we need patience. I don't know about you, but I struggle in that time when I need the Lord to help me to be patient. I don't have it. Sometimes, Lord, I need you to do more for me because I'm tired of waiting. We live in a microwave society. Many of us know that already. So here in scripture, we have in James 5, and we're here in verses 7 and 8. The scripture says to us, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? The farmer waits, right? Waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. And then it goes on to say, you also be patient. This is verse eight. It says, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Obviously, this scripture is talking about God coming and the returning of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I want to say that it's also encouraging us. And this is what I gathered from this word. It's also encouraging us while we're here on this earth to know that just as the farmer has to wait for its precious fruit to come forward from the earth, it has to wait for the early rain and the latter rain. If you live in Houston, you've seen some of this rain that we've endured over the last few weeks, but the farmer has to wait. The farmer has to wait for the early rain and the latter rain. I don't know about anybody else, but that rain is not something you want to run into. It's not something you want to endure, but you know that it's necessary. So the farmer waits patiently. So while we're in our season of waiting, the Lord is saying, I will strengthen you. I want you to gather patience in this season of waiting. So being strong is important. Being patient is important, but also asking the Lord for wisdom. Lord, I need your wisdom. Help me to gain what it is that I'm supposed to gain in this season of waiting. I don't want to go through this season and not have obtained or gather what I'm supposed to get in this time. Because in this season is preparation for what is next. So I want you to impart some wisdom unto me, Lord, so that I'm ready for the next season that you're taking me into. So when we look here in scripture, and now we're reading in James 1, beginning at verse 2, going into verse 5, the scripture says to us, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience. And let patience, there goes that word again, and let patience have its perfect work that you might be perfect, incomplete, lacking nothing. Patience is essential because in our season of waiting, God says if it does its perfect work, you would be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And then it goes on to say, and this right now is in verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. 
The Lord knows that you need to be strengthened in this season. Even when we looked in the scripture and we were reading in Psalm 27 and 14, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. The Lord knows we need to be strong. Not only does he know we need to be strong, but he knows that a lot of us need to be more patient, that we struggle in that area. So God gave us a word in his scripture in James 5 verses 7 and 8, but also here in James 1 verses 2 through 5. And it talks about being patient patient, letting patience have its perfect work, that we would be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But it goes on, if any of you lack wisdom, you don't know what's going on in this season. Lord, I don't know what it is you're trying to get me to see. Help me to see it, Lord, because I'm tired of being in this season. If you lack wisdom, ask it of him. Who, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. That's the word of God. That's not my word. That's God's word. And so I want to encourage you, if you are in a season of waiting, and let's be honest, for those of us, even those that you see posting on Facebook, they're posting on their social media, or you see them and their life looks fabulous. I want you to know that while they're in being blessed in one area, they still be, may be seeking the Lord and waiting in another. So don't look at other people and judge. My sister and I had a conversation about this recently. While one is being blessed on one side, the other one is waiting for something in another. And so we want to encourage you just knowing that in your season of waiting, you're not alone. The Lord says, wait with a great spirit of expectation, knowing that he will strengthen you. He will help you with that thorn in your side of patience. He will give you the patience that you need, and he will give you wisdom if you lack wisdom. As I was looking just for something to share with you to encourage you, I found a website called MotivateUs.com. And in that website, they actually had a poem, and the name of the poem was Wait. And so now I would like to read that poem to you. And so please forgive me if I take my eyes away for a few times, but I'm just going to read this poem to you. I have it pulled up here on my computer, and it says, Desperately and helpless and longing I cried. Patiently, lovingly, my Lord replied. I pled and I wept for a clue to my fate. And the master so gently said, child, you must wait. Is that any of you? Wait, wait, you say, my indignant reply. Lord, I need answers. I need to know why. Didn't we just talk about wisdom? Goes on to say, is your hand shortened or have you not heard? My faith I have asked and I'm claiming your word. I'm speaking your word, all right? Some of us are in that season. I'm speaking the word of the Lord. I'm going on with the poem. It says, my future and all to which I can relate hangs in the balance and you tell me to wait. I'm needing a yes, a go ahead sign or even a no to which I can resign. And Lord, you promise that if we believe, we need but to ask and we shall receive. And Lord, I've been asking, and this is my cry. I'm weary of asking, I need a reply. Then quietly, softly, I leaned on my fate. As my master replied once again, you must wait. So I slumped in my chair, defeated and taught, and grumbled to God, so I'm waiting for what? Then it goes on, he seemed then to kneel and his eyes wept with mine. He, and he tenderly said, I could give you a sign. I could shake the heavens and darken the sun. I could raise the dead, cause the mountains to run. All you seek I could give and pleased you would be. You would have what you want and you wouldn't know me. You'd know the depths of my love for each saint. You you would not know the depths of my love for each saint. You would not know the power that I give to the faint. You would not learn to see through the clouds of despair. You'd not learn to trust by knowing I'm there. You'd not know the joy of resting in me when darkness and silence were all you could see. You'd never experience the fullness of love as to the peace of my spirit descends, descends like a dove. You'd know that I give and I save for a start, but you'd not know the depth of the beat of my heart. The glow of my comfort late in the night, the faith I give when the walk is without sight, the depth that's beyond getting just what you ask of an infinite God who makes what you have last. And you never know, should your pain quickly free, 
what it means that my grace is sufficient for thee. Yes, your dreams for that loved one overnight may come true, but all oh, the loss if I lost what I'm doing in you. So be silent, my child, and, and in time you will see that the greatness of gift is the gift to know me, is to get to know me. And though, and though oft may my answer seem terribly late, my most precious of all is in the still you wait. And so I wanted to share that poem with you. It really blessed my entire soul. When you talk about some of the times and the darknesses and the silence, when God is telling us to wait, God is saying, in those times, you know me the best. And if I speedily answered you, sometimes you wouldn't get to know me the way I desire. If you're in a season of wait, God is trying to impart wisdom unto you, just like we shared in his word in um, James 1 verses two through five. God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to allow patience to have his perfect, perfect work. He will strengthen you in those times. God wants you to be encouraged. Would you wait with the spirit of expectation? The Lord's gonna do something in his timing and not your own. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for our season of waiting. It's not always a pleasant one, Father God. Sometimes we just want you to move. We just want you to act on our behalf. But right now, when you don't, Lord God, we pray that you would impart wisdom, that you would give us patience, that you would strengthen us in this journey, Lord God. And we thank you now that you're helping us to wait with the spirit of expectation for our soul waits on you alone as we read in your word. We thank you now for encouraging us. We thank you, Lord God, that when we can't see and we don't know what you're doing, that you give us your wisdom. Encourage us, Lord God, and put people around us that will encourage us in your word. We thank you now. We praise you and we glorify you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. I want to thank you so much for watching. I pray this is a blessing to you. And if it was, please share it with someone else. I hope to see you all again next week. Don't forget, we wait with the spirit of expectation. In that time, God is strengthening us. He is helping us to be more patient and he will impart his wisdom upon us. Thank you so much for following me on this journey to purpose. I hope that you'll put on your wings with me and let's soar.